awesome. So, uh, hey, what's up, Metalheads? Uh, this is Lynn, live to you from Metalhead Mini Studios. Uh, also, what I got going on at the same time is I have a Google Hangout. I'm part of a group called the Hobby Hangout, where a bunch of us hobbyists from all over the world uh, come together on Google Hangouts, and either we just sit and paint together and laugh and talk about everything and nothing at all, or uh, actually some of us painters come on and actually come on to talk about important subject matter that you guys might want to learn about. For example, today I am discussing getting into the business of commission painting. I have my notes in front of me so that I make sure I cover all my bases. Uh, there are people on here that might ask questions and when they do I will repeat back the questions so that you know what's being asked and uh, once we get all that out of the way, the main information and some main questions that will be asked, I will then cut the video and then I will continue hanging out with my friends over here. So, without further ado, I shall now begin with what is a commission painter's purpose, okay? Commission painter's purpose is because some people love the minis, but they just might not love painting them. Um, also, some people like to game, but not paint. So there are people who like to play 40K, like to play War Machine, but do not like the aspect of the fact that they have to paint the models, especially in tournaments, in order to get them on the table. Some prefer assembly, over painting. Some people are uh, not into the painting part at all. They just like the aspect of putting everything together. And uh, also it could be because the client on your end is too busy for painting. Uh, perhaps their life is too demanding and does not allow it. Or perhaps their job does not allow for it. Or they have a tournament coming up and the time that when the tournament is coming they would not have time to paint the army. Just so that we're clear, commission painting is not for everybody, okay? Um, some people are okay with painting for other people. Hey again, glad to see you're back on. <laughs> um, some people are okay with painting for other people. Like one good way to look at it is that a person can look at it as paid practice. So that's one way to look at it, okay? Uh, also, the money can be very good. You just have to be okay with the fact that you're going to have deadlines to meet and that there are going to be times where you might, like for example, when big conventions are coming up, like Gen Con and Adepticon and such, that if you're in that circuit and people know that you paint a lot of people at the same time, might send stuff over to you to paint. Isn't that right, Kay? Yeah, that's you right there. I'm talking about you, buddy. <laughs> okay, so some people are not for that. They're not for taking time that they can, you know, away from their families, away from their lives, and using it to do for other people. Because even though, yes, it's a job, or it can be a job and you can make money, there is that whole dynamic, that whole aspect that you're doing something for someone else and take and sacrificing your time. And some people are just not okay with that. So you need to make sure that you're okay with that before you decide to go into this. Don't give up your day job until you've done this for a while, a long time, and you know for sure that this is something that you're into doing. Painters such as myself, Caleb Wissenbach, AJ Thornton, Shoshi Bauer, we have been in this for years to get to where we are where we're at a point where we can just paint and we don't have to do anything else if we do not want to so please do keep that in mind this is not something that happens right away you don't quit your job call in rich or whatever and yeah I'm gonna commission paint and that that's the way it works because you're you're fooling you're, you're living in a fool's paradise it's just not how, how it goes okay now let's talk about the next point why is discussing this? Why is discussing getting into the business of commission painting a controversial topic, okay? There are, when people sit there and they discuss and say, yeah, I, you know, I should be making this much money, you know, for painting and this and that and the other, and, and while you could be right, there is somebody on the other side that is always going to negatively debate your point. Um, it basically it comes down to this. You can't expect somebody to understand something that they've never done as a job. So for example, when you see people put up posts on Facebook 
uh, that are servers in restaurants, okay? I general manage restaurants, I've served in restaurants, and, and I know all about the business. I've seen that when either myself or some people sit there and post up stuff about serving, and that it, when getting stiffed on a bill, that people sit there and they say, oh, well, if you get stiffed, that just means you did a bad job. Truthfully, that's, that's not always the case. Some people are just cheap or some people just don't tip because they just don't tip. And it does not mean that the server sucked at their job. It does not mean um, that <clears throat> something was lacking or whatever. It really just doesn't always mean that at all. But because the person did not work in a restaurant, they don't really fully understand the way the whole thing goes. Just like you can't expect a server or a commission painter or, you know, uh, an aircraft maintenance person or something to understand what it's like to be a doctor in, in an ER, you know? So it, it basically, same thing, if you're a commission painter or something, you can't expect somebody on the other side to understand what that job entails. So that's basically what it comes down to. So the controversy is just, what from what I've seen, a bunch of miscommunication, misinformation, and people just not really understanding what it's like to do that as a job. So just so we're just so we're clear, everybody has different opinions on how much something is worth. Everybody has different opinions on how long it takes to paint something. Not putting into consideration that it is uh, pers there's perfect personal preference. Uh, personal capability, you know, j just, it's different for everybody, and that just doesn't always get taken into account. Does anybody have questions at this point right now? You good for the next point? Okay, great. Okay, your time is worth money. Know this before you go into doing this. Your time is worth money. That's why people pay you when you go to work at a job, isn't it? you're doing this job it is set in some way that you are that you're going to get paid x amount for your time at that point it is up to you when you look for said job if that rate of pay works for you or not in this case you have to decide what rate of pay works for you and you cannot sell yourself short let me give you an example i have a friend great guy that um, a friend of mine that I see when I go and work over at Millennium Con, sweetest person. He's been paying for a little while, and somebody, a friend of his from a gaming store, gave him a model to paint. I believe it was a privateer press model. I could be mistaken, but I remember it was a guy that was mounted on a horse, and it was armor and all that good stuff, okay? He put a lot of effort into it. He did sky earth, non-metallic metal. It was beautifully done and everything. And he turned around and he told me, yeah, I got paid for doing this. I got paid 20 bucks. And I turned around and I said to him, well, how long did it take you to paint this model? And he turned around and told me something in the ballpark of like 10 hours. So I said to him, so you got paid $2 an hour to paint that model? I know there's probably kids in sweatshops in other countries that are making more money than that. Why, why would you let somebody just pay you $2 an hour for something that you put a lot of effort and love into and that you painted beautifully? I want you to sit here right now and I want you to tell me at least three things that you could have done with that 10 hours time instead of just painting a model for someone else. And don't count, I could have painted a model for me because that goes without saying, of course you could have done that. Tell me other things you could have done. And he was like, well, you know, I could have slept. I, you know, I could have done this. And I, I brought out points too. I was like, hey, you could have went out on a date with a girl. You could have done this. You could have done that. You know, your time is worth money. There's a lot of things that I can think of. Probably just about anything I can think of is worth more than $2 an hour of my time, okay? And you have to look at that for you too. You have to know that you're worth something, especially when you've gone into as much as we have in order to become commission painters, which will bring me to the next point, okay? Why are commission pricing, why is commission pricing what it is, okay? There was something that I posted a while back as a guest blogger, and it was basically an article that I wrote that discussed why commission prices are what they are. And if I find it again, I never had a chance to look for it yet, but if I find it again, I'll post it, you know, for you and so that you can take a look at it. But let me just discuss here a synopsis of what it was about because it is pertinent to this, okay? Commission prices are what they are for a few important reasons. 
One is classes, okay? The classes that all of us took at conventions and such were not free, okay? Yes, if we all worked at the same con, we might be able to sit in on some classes, but at bare minimum, they're asking that their costs are covered, which is more than fair, okay? But even so, none of the classes that we took for free, even when we started out in the beginning. So a lot of us, and I, even when I just speak for myself, I'd say I spent a, a good a few thousand dollars on just taking classes. Um, and the amount of money that was spent for the classes can equate to what somebody spends at, say, a community college and, and such um, for a certification for a job, let's say, okay? Uh, so there's that. Uh, some commission painters, such as Shoshana Bauer, you might have seen her. She's Shoshi's Magnificent uh, Miniature Painting. She actually has an art degree from, a, from an accredited college that she spent thousands of dollars on. She's probably still paying off the loan for it as we speak, okay? That counts in what she's doing. So she has the educational background on top of having taken miniature classes. And I can tell you and vouch for her right now that she paid to take miniature classes because she took all of mine, okay? To sit there and be able to paint beautiful miniatures for you. Know this, that you need to have the education behind you. Please don't go into doing miniature painting, you know, for other people and not have background on at least the basics and some intermediate classes at bare minimum, even if you're just doing tabletop painting for people. I think it's only fair that if people are sitting there and they're paying for your work, it's fair to them that you make sure you have some education behind you as well. I think we could, we could agree on that, yes? Hey, welcome. Okay, next one. Practice. We have practice, practice, practice. At least I can say, I can speak for myself on this and, and others, that uh, we practiced and practiced in order to be able to paint for other people. For example, I have been painting since 1997. I did not take in my first commission until I believe it was uh, 2008. 2008 was when I took in my first commission, okay? That, that's, that's a while later, okay? You'll know when you're ready. Awards. A lot of us who do commission painting, some people just do competition painting just for fun, which is fine. Um, but also those of us who paint commissions, we like to go into competition painting as well. There's a few reasons for it. It's fun. It also kind of gives us a gauge on how we're doing. Okay, that could be something to think about too. Another thing is, is that there are commission painters that use the awards that they achieve as also a way to back them up. So when they come to you and they say, yeah, you want me to paint this model, it's $400, okay? If they have a golden demon behind them, you can, you can bet your ass you're gonna get a good paint job. I'm just saying, okay? So that kind of backs up as like another form of certification, if you will, too. Now, just to be clear, this is not to say that people who have not won certain awards are not, uh, are not able to give you just as good of a paint job, better, or almost as good, or what have you. Do keep in mind that people have to attend those conventions. They have to attend those competitions in order to obtain those awards. So there are some people that can't make it to certain conventions, either because of life obligations, uh, small children, okay? I can't go to every single convention that's going on. I have two small children, okay? Um, or things keep coming up. Your job is demanding or, or, or what have you. So some people can't go to those conventions in order to get those awards, okay? So that is something to consider too. But just so that you understand the reasoning behind why a professional commission painter might go to competitions, this is one of the reasons why. Again, don't discount another painter if they don't have those same prestigious awards. They just might not be able to go to a place in order to get them. Okay? Questions at this time, guys? Everybody's on mute so that they don't dis disturb me. Did you have a question, dear? No? Okay. It's okay. We can wait till the end. It's cool. Okay. So, here's something else. 
So say you decide to get into commission painting, right? And you have people that are talking to you. Oh, hey, so I heard you paint. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. So they're like, uh, yeah, I got this mini here for you. How much would you charge me to paint it or whatever? And let's just say you sit there and you think, okay, well, I took all of Lynn's classes. I took AJ's classes. Uh, I took Aaron Lovejoy's classes and whatever. And I've gone up to the master level of painting. I've won this award. Or maybe I didn't get to win an award yet, but I paint really good. Everybody gives me good, good feedback. And I know that I've mastered these techniques. Uh, you want tabletop painting? Yeah, okay, so say, I don't know, uh, it'll take me X amount of hours. Do your, your best bet is to do it per hour, your time, okay? Um, I would say don't take less than uh, $10 an hour uh, if you're a good, if you really are a good painter, okay? So say for argument's sake, oh, it'll take me about three hours to paint it, whatever, $30, okay? make no mistake you are going to run into people who are going to argue with you about your pricing they will sit there and say it's too expensive maybe they're just cheap i don't know who knows everybody's got their own story okay don't let people argue with you about your pricing if you want to negotiate the pricing a certain way that's on you okay but keep in mind you keep doing it people are going to sit there and they're going to keep thinking they can lowball you every time know that you again this goes back to the point your time is worth money don't let no one tell you different okay if people argue with you about the price best bet i'm not trying to be a jerk no nothing but turn the tables around on them and turn around and say to them especially if you treat this seriously like it's your job because that's the, that's the secret too you got to treat this like a business you got to treat this like your job okay because this is for example this is how we pay for the house this is how we keep the lights on, okay? And you got to sit there and turn the tables around on them. Be like, all right, well, if your job turned around to you and said to you, oh, uh, you know, I know that we've been paying you $10, $15 an hour the whole time you worked here, but I want you to come into work today and work for free. You know damn well they're going to sit there and they're going to say no, okay? And they, oh, no, my time is worth money. Well, that's funny. So is mine, okay? So you got to have self-respect, okay? If you don't have self-respect, then people are just going to step on you. And that's not going to be anybody else's fault but your own. You're not going to be hurting nobody else's wallet but your own. And in my case, if I turned around and did that, I wouldn't be just hurting myself. I'd also be hurting Brandon. I'd be hurting my children. I'd be hurting my house and everything else, okay? So you have to have self-respect. It's very important, okay? So let's go on to the next point. Again, here, I put, if you don't treat it like a job or a business, they won't either. Believe that. People will let you starve if you let them, okay? So that's the, that's the real 411 right there. You got to treat it, you have to be serious about what you're doing. Always make sure that you are credited for your work. Always, no matter what. Even if between you and another person, if you turn around and said, yeah, you know, I'll do you a favor. I'll paint this mini for you for free. And in trade, you're giving me whatever. I don't know. Um, you're giving me product in return. You're giving me ice cream. You're giving me a t-shirt. I don't know. Whatever. It's, it, that's up to you and the, between you and the person. Um, then you, you got to make sure you still get credit. Whether it was a free job or if, if something you painted for you that you that you put your name on okay and if somebody's going to share it make sure it says that it was shared from your page I mean on Facebook it'll say anyway that it was shared from such and such page but if let's say they're gonna post a picture of it on their website uh, and they wanted to put a miniature or something on their website and it happens to be your work make sure you're getting credit for your work okay because if you are not careful and I'm not saying this happens all the time it actually doesn't happen all the time but once in a while uh, like there have been situations where let's say somebody took somebody uh, somebody paid somebody for a commission and uh, they took the work and claimed it as their own and put it into a competition now thank God when a picture of it was posted somewhere I think that somebody caught it and was like oh whoa, whoa that that's not yours that's so-and-so's that they got the whole thing fixed but this is why we want to make sure that we get credit 
and you always post pictures of what it is that you did because sometimes that's your only way of proof too. So if somebody turns around and let's say uses a, your, a picture of your stuff and they turn around and they get money off it, you know, say they win, like if you win Crystal Brush, for example, and you get first prize, you get $10,000. You can possibly now, somebody... have for your stuff. That might be what you what you need, you know, in order to get what's yours. So no matter what, make sure that you get credit for your work. That's important. Uh, another point is be realistic. You need to be realistic. People are going to come to you to do commissions, and they're going to be you're going to run into people that are going to be very unrealistic about timelines. Uh, I've had people turn around, drop off over 100 mini inches in my shop, and turn around and say, "Oh, oh yeah, you can get this done in in, in like a week, right?" N no, no. <laughs> I think even if somebody lived alone and didn't have a life, okay, they'd still need to sleep. So that would mean that hundred and something miniatures wouldn't get done still in a week. So, I mean, there's, I mean, you can, there are some exceptions where you can paint an army in a week or whatever, if you can airbrush the whole thing or whatever. But keep in mind, this is Murphy's Law I'm talking about, and I'm talking about somebody that dropped off something that I couldn't possibly just sit there and airbrush the whole thing and just detail it and just be like, here you go, you know, it wasn't that kind of thing. So you will run into people that have an unrealistic timeline and they expect you to get something done like super duper quick and you're like uh no because uh, I have a job if you if you have one um, I have children again if you have one or maybe you just want to hang out with your dog maybe you have it scheduled that you like to play Xbox a certain amount of hours a week or if you don't play WoW 10 hours a week you're gonna kill somebody you have to put that into consideration this is your life you have a life outside of this if you don't make sure that you have a life outside of this you're gonna end up hurting yourself and you're gonna burn out really fast so please do keep that in mind okay um, make sure to make time to paint stuff for yourself too yeah trust me I truthfully did learn that the hard way um, another point is your commission painting at times can make you stagnant in your skill set if you don't take the time to advance yourself okay so that's one of the reasons why you want to make sure to paint things for yourself in between besides to keep you happy uh, when I do commissions when I do uh, quick pieces for myself in between commissions I tend to call those lunch break pieces so whenever you see me do a post and I say a lunch break piece you're like ah yeah she's doing that in between a commission just to it, it's a way to break the monotony too okay um, so you definitely want to make the time to paint stuff for yourself and here's another reason why when you paint something for yourself you are more likely to push yourself you are more likely to advance yourself and you are more likely to sit there and say oh you know what I want to try this you know and I'm sure you'd rather try it on a piece that's yours rather than to try it on a piece that someone paid you to do and gave you specific direction on okay so that's another reason why you want to make sure to do that uh, let's see uh, start it start off Start off taking one commission at a time and make yourself, you know, comfortable with it. Take one commission at a time and do not take in the next one until you finish your first, okay? Uh, if you take in a bunch of commissions at a time right away, then you will end up drowning because you will never have time to paint anything for yourself because you'll be too busy having to meet deadlines for everybody else that you're painting for, okay? <clears throat> so that's something very important. That is not something you want to happen to you because that's another thing that'll make you unhappy and it'll definitely have you burn out. That is without question because you're gonna get tired of painting for everybody else and then you're gonna turn around and be like, well, what am I gonna paint for me? And either you're gonna end up giving back a lot of jobs that people gave you and be like, nah, bro, here, I, I can't do this. Or um, you just won't end up doing it and then the person will get mad because you promised it at this time. Or maybe life got in the way and you got a little delayed, which is fine. <coughs> but if you turn around and like a year, two years, or you know, X amount of time, like a crazy amount of time passes with no communication and you still never brought nothing to the table to them, they're going to get mad, and that could affect your business as well. So that's definitely something you want to put into consideration, okay? Give it time, because over time you're going to see that you are going to have to adjust your business based on what works for you, okay? So, for example, if you don't like doing armies, 
then don't do them, okay? Um, if you only like doing ones that you like, pieces that you like that inspire you, that is perfectly okay. And you can stick with that, okay? You, you have to be honest, too. So if somebody turns around to you and says, oh, hey, you know, I want you to paint this little rabbit dude or whatever, and if you're not into that, you know, just be like, mm, you know, I apologize, but that piece doesn't really speak to me. However, let me refer you to either a group page on Facebook that has commissioned painters. Let me refer you to this website. Let me refer you to my friend Bob, who's also a painter, and perhaps maybe they can help you, okay? Which brings me to the next point. The relationship between commissioned painter and client can be sort of like a regular relationship without all the mushy stuff, mind you, okay? Uh, what I mean is you have two different personalities. Now, now granted, there's uh, the, the objective is a transaction of having a miniature painted by, by a certain painter. And perhaps the person approached you because they liked your work and you've been promoting yourself and what have you, or your prices are lower, or, you know, just whatever their story is. Now, the initial contact has been made. Keep in mind, though, in addition to that, two personalities are coming together. What works for the client might not work for you, okay, or vice versa. So while, say, somebody might come to me and like my work or something, but maybe there was something about the, the whole thing that didn't work, and it could be a number of things. I mean, I'm not talking about, I'm not honestly talking about anybody in particular, but like, um, for example, maybe you didn't like something that the client said, or maybe they didn't like something you said, or maybe the client is constantly on your back, you know, for stuff or whatever, and you don't like that, and that doesn't work for you. Just keep in mind that there's going to come a time where something like that is going to happen. When you run into that problem, your best bet is to uh, refer them to someone else or something. Don't stress yourself, okay? It is not worth it for you to stress yourself. This hobby was designed for us to enjoy. It just happens to be a plus that people like myself and other people can make money from it, okay? But in the end, this hobby was designed for you to enjoy. And if somebody is stressing you out very badly, I've learned that it's not worth it to get stressed out. And it, therefore, it might be better for you to either finish the job quickly and get it done, and maybe be honest and say, hey, in the future, since this part didn't seem to work in our client business relationship, I'm going to refer you to this person. They're very quick. They're very nice. They're very, you know, they're not rude or I, I don't know, just whatever. Whatever in that part didn't work, it's, it's okay. And it's actually cool of you. You know, you put you on the higher ground to sit there and say, hey, you know what, this part of our relationship didn't work, but I think you might fit better with this person. Because do keep in mind that if you're a professional commission painter, over time you're going to end up going to com conventions and such and other events, and you're going to participate in groups, and you're going to meet people. And in that time, you're going to meet different people that you might be able to refer other people to that they might fit better with. We The, the cool thing is we need to work together, okay? There's a bunch of minis in this world that need to be painted. So don't sit there and feel like you have to hoard them all yourself because that's not realistic. Nobody has time to paint all those minis, okay? If you sit there and you help somebody else and say, hey, I think you'll work better with AJ. I think you'll work better with Caleb or, you know, or something like that. Then rest assured, if the same thing goes the other way around, hopefully they'll do the same for you too. We all paint different, okay? That's another thing you'll end up seeing, too, is a lot of people feeling competitive about their painting, like they want to be the one to get all the jobs. That's not really a realistic way to go, okay? There's too many minis in this world that need to be painted, like I said. Um, we all paint different. Our styles and way of painting, one could be similar to someone else, but in the end, each person paints differently. It's kind of like handwriting, if you will. Uh, everybody develops their own style, their own kind of painting, and so people will approach you if they like your work or for different reasons. They like the way you did this job, that job, the other job, whatever. So do keep that in mind. And don't get offended 
if some if like say you and another professional painter are standing together and some someone comes up and says oh hey I need this painted and I'm gonna go to you or I'm gonna go to you like don't ever feel offended about that because while that could be a specific situation that happened to you the next time it could turn around and happen for you or somebody else you know and be like hey I like the way you did this so it's for different reasons don't take offense to it don't take it personal it, it doesn't always really even mean anything so definitely keep that in mind now does anybody have questions at this point <coughs> hi Les hi. how are you good okay I'm talking about marketing now okay okay, okay. <laughs> So, marketing yourself. Commission painting... Spell that real quick. Is that, shut up. <laughs> that, <laughs> commission painting is visual. So, you always want to make sure that you post pictures. Okay? That, that's very important. So, what that means is that you want to have a Facebook for your studio. Okay? Um, you want to have a separate Facebook fan page. Okay? Um... You don't want to spam everybody on your on your Facebook, unless you're like me, who basically just about all your friends, besides people who you went to school with or in the music industry with or you know whatever, and already know that you that you promote a lot and whatever. Unless you have that situation going on, but uh, basically for the other people, kind of more on the outside, you kind of want to have your own Facebook business page, okay? Um, if you don't have a name for your studio, come up with one. Or sit there and use your name. That's perfectly cool, too. Hey, it's Bob Smith's studio. All right, there's Bob Smith. He's really cool. I'm going to like his page, okay? Um, create a website or a blog. Um, sites for, for blogs, there's a Blogger. I think that one's really popular. And there's Tumblr. Tumblr can sometimes be a little slow in getting followers. But, I mean, if you keep at it, you know, you'll be good. So Tumblr is another blog site, and then there's a, there's a few others. I don't know offhand. I'm not that computer literate, to be completely honest with you. Um, you also want to have a Twitter, and you want to have an Instagram. See, people love looking at pictures, so you got the Instagram going on, okay? And Twitter is, a, is a, usually a quick way to share the link to say, hey, you want to look at this? Go over here. So that's one of the good things that, that Twitter is used for, okay? You want to post regularly in order to keep you in the loop okay to keep you in the loop and to keep other people in the loop about you all right so what that means is you're going to want to join Facebook groups there are different Facebook groups the League of Extraordinary Commission Painters uh, there are other commission painter groups so look for those keywords then there's other um, there's other ones like uh, Metalhead Minis. We have a Facebook group page, so feel free to send a request for that. Um, and then there's WGC for War Gamers Consortium. They have one. The Hobby Hangout, that's for people they can show off their work to besides posting on a Hangout and say, hey, hang out with me. Um, so there's different Facebook groups that you can partake in. And here's the thing. You want to post at minimum, say, two, three times a week. Hey, I'm working on this. How you been? Hey, I just finished painting this. Or, yay, I'm so excited. I just bought this paint or I just bought this brush. You know, keep people talking to you and, and, and be friendly and be social, okay? People gravitate. They tend to gravitate toward that more, okay? Um, if you're a very busy shop, like my shop is, Metalhead Minis, you'll sometimes see us post more than once a day. I try not to, you know, sometimes, but if there's a lot of, hey, 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 <laughs> but if there's a lot of stuff going on and everything, like we're, we're painting this and then we're working on the gaming table and we're working on this and whatever, then yes, we post multiple times a day sometimes because we're just a really busy shop. But there is a such thing as posting too much or too little. So in other words, if you post too little, like once every two weeks or something like that people will remember you for five minutes and then they'll forget that you exist I'm not trying to be a jerk I'm just being honest um, if you post every five minutes then people aren't going to be very interested in you either because they're going to think that you're annoyed that you're being um, that you sort of have like a desperate approach and that you're sort of being annoying. Oh my God, I'm not on this person posting again. They just posted like five minutes ago and you know, and whatever. So, and that annoys people because it also goes on their notifications and their feeds and whatever. So nobody wants to be bothered with none of that, you know? Um, 
if you like the camera, or if you grew up in, in show business, basically, like I did and stuff, and you're already used to the camera, then, hey, what the hell? Sit there and do YouTube videos, or if you're not shy and stuff like that, then you, there's also, uh, you could do Facebook. You could do live videos on Facebook, too. Uh, you can, I, I'm not honestly sure how you do this, but you can live stream Google Hangout and, and put that onto YouTube. I'll figure that out at some point in time and explain it to you when I do. Um, they also, there's other, there's other apps such as Periscope, there's Twitch, there's uh, Beam. I believe someone told me about one called Beam, if I'm not mistaken. And those are ones that you can that you can use uh, to have people watch you paint, and they can type to you and give you feedback and stuff. On Google, you can, Google Hangout, you guys can talk to each other, but like with Twitch and Periscope and stuff like that, people can type to you, hey, I love your work, and you can speak back and say hey I love you too you know and whatever so it, it those kind of things work too and basically those are the main points that I can think of off the top of my head that I wanted to get out you guys can unmute your microphones if you have questions Tim are you about to unmute looks like you are yeah I just wanted to say hi I'll bring you guys I'll be back Hi. Hi, Tim. Hi. Mm -hmm. Hi. Okay, I'm getting... <laughs> okay. I do have something to say about that, though, with notifications. Talk to like, me. I carry two phones. So, every, like, and I do have a couple people that just blows constantly, and my phones will both be just vibrating in my pocket if I happen to have them, you know, muted. And if they're not muted, ding, 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 ding. Yeah, so I'm not sure if you guys were able to hear the audio there, but somebody just turned around and said that they agree on the point of that there is a such thing as posting too much. Um, this person in particular has two phones that they carry. It's one for personal and one for work, right, hon? Yes. Okay. Okay, but, but the Facebook account is connected to both phones. So what happens is um, every time a certain people post that post all constantly then there his phone is constantly going off and while he's at work obviously he can't have that going on so either it's constantly vibrating and if it's not on silent or vibrate then it's constantly going ding 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 or constantly lighting up and that runs down your battery too very quickly on the on the phone that was a very good point thanks for bringing that up is there anybody else that has a point they'd like to bring up did you have a question Tim broke something. Uh, Tim always breaks something. Mm -hmm. Okay, well then if there is nothing else in way of questions, then what I'm going to get ready to do is cut the video, but you but you guys here who are on the Hangout, you can still are more than welcome to be here. So anyway, I uh, hope you liked the video. Please make sure to hit like, or if you don't, that's okay too. Uh, be sure to subscribe, and don't forget if you can email us at mhmpropainting at gmail.com if you have questions. Other than that, you guys stay crispy and milk. Keep on painting. You guys have a good night.